Students, we never want to run out of money. I think it goes without saying. But if our bank account gets to zero or below zero, some really challenging things start to happen. The bank might call you and say, uh, hey, you know you don't have any money, right? And they won't say it like that. They'll say, excuse me, ma'am or sir, we were just calling to inform you that your daily balance has fallen below minimum threshold. They'll say something like really nice like that. But really what it means is you don't have any money left and you're like, oh yeah, I need to, I need to take care of that. So today's lesson is to avoid that. It's called reconciling your bank statement. And when you reconcile with somebody, you get together, you look at the bad, you look at the good, and then you just come together. That's reconciling with someone, and that's exactly what we're gonna do with your bank statement. We're gonna take a look at the bad and take a look at the good, and we're gonna come together and just figure out what's happening, all right? Reconciling the bank statement. Let's take a look at this bank statement down here. We have a beginning balance of $901. Okay, now again, we do not want to dip below zero. Or, or even get close to zero, that'd be scary. So we're at $901. What we need to do before we start impacting this 901 and reconciling to get our ending balance is determine whether we have payments or receipts. Are we like receiving money or are we sending money out to somebody? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in parentheses the line items that are outflows, cash outflows, cash payments, things that are negative, all right? Because when you parenthesize things in business math or finance or accounting, it means negative. So on the 31st of March, we get our paycheck and automated clearinghouse incoming. Yay, incoming. Incoming means it's coming into us. Transfer to our bank account of $1,432. Because of the size of this, that's probably your paycheck from work. So that's good. So that's that's going to be cum that's going to add to your beginning balance. So that's helpful. Outgoing, ooh, outgoing leaving us. Goodbye money. You are negative. You are leaving. Bye-bye. Right? So that's going to be negative. An app payment. So you opened up your phone. You said, I owe somebody some money. So I'm gonna to go to my app that pays, that payment app, and I'm gonna type in somebody's phone number or their email address, and boom, I just sent them some money. But that needs to come out of my bank account. So that's gonna be negative as well. An electronic bill payment for rent. Oh, okay, so we don't own our own house. And if you don't own your own house, you have to rent someone else's. Sometimes that's called leasing. Right, so I can just write that down there. It's a little tidbit of information. Lease is the same as rent. If you lease or rent some um, an apartment or a condo or a house, you have to pay somebody money. So that is a payment. That's an outflow. Finally, on the 3rd of April, you have an incoming phone transfer. So you open up your text messages and it says you have $30. You're like, that's awesome. Thank you for paying me back. So maybe it was a friend and you all went out to eat and you said, oh, you know, just I'll pay for this and you can pay me back later. And so they sent you a phone transfer of $30. So now we've understood that the top one and the bottom one are incoming. They're coming into you. They, um, it's money that, uh, that's received, so that's positive. These outgoing ones in the middle mean that they're going to subtract from your total amount. So we have 901 and 1,432 and 30. Those are all, our, all of our positive amounts because that's all money that we either had to begin with or that came into us during the month of late March to April. So we add all this up. Three, three is six, four and nine is 13. Okay. 
So the sum of our incoming and beginning balance of cash on hand is $2,363. Superb. But we also paid some money. We paid perhaps a friend on a phone transfer. We had an app payment perhaps to someone else that we owed money to. And then we had our big chunk, right? That's expensive, $790 for rent. So what we're going to do over here is add those up. So 790, 31, and 42. So add all these up, 12 and 16. There we go, 863. So this 863 is a negative number because that's money that we sent out of our bank account. So we're going to subtract 800 and $63. Three minus three is zero, six minus six is zero. We get to borrow one here. 13 minus five, uh, 13 minus eight is five. And the one comes down here. So our ending balance is $1,500. That's good news. Because if our ending balance had been negative, and the bank would have been calling us up and saying, excuse me, ma'am or sir, you don't have any money. They wouldn't say it like that. They would say something like, your minimum amount is below zero. They just say it in the most eloquent of ways. So, you know, you don't even really feel bad about it until you start thinking about, oh, I need to make sure that I have some more money in my bank account. There's one thing though, that I want to have you think about here. I want you to imagine that instead of $901 at the beginning, we had <coughs> eight, um, $701. And I want you to imagine that rent wasn't due on the 2nd of April. It was due before that, on the 30th of March. So this is a different scenario where you had a rent payment of 790. Something really bad happens here. Yes, you get paid the next day for your paycheck, but $701 isn't sufficient to cover your rent payment of $790. So it's possible that this e-bill payment, which is basically like a check that gets mailed to the owner of the house you're living in, or the condo or apartment you're living in, it's not enough to cover it. So when they go to cash it, they can't. The bank says there aren't any, there aren't enough funds in the original account. That's going to be really tough because your bank might charge you a fee and your landlord, the person who owns the property, might be really upset. They'll be like, I went to go cash this and there wasn't any money there. So this all goes to show you that you have to be really careful when reconciling your bank statement because you want to have positive funds in your bank account at all times. If it ever dips below negative, you need to figure out a course of action to make sure that it's positive. One way you could do this is by just calling your landlord and say, hey, I'm getting paid tomorrow. <laughs> Don't cash the check today. I made a mistake. All right, please cash it in two days. That like positive communication with forethought, most landlords are going to be like, thank you for calling me. I appreciate you. Yes, I'll, I'll give you the extension. So always be planning, always be reconciling. Have a great day.